It's all fun and games with the Nintendo Wii, except for when the sensor bar either gets lost or it breaks. Now, the year is 2020, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but they're not making the Nintendo Wii anymore. So, you'll need to either find an aftermarket Wii sensor bar, which plugs in via USB, which can be, which can be great if you're emulating Wii on computer, like I am here, or, assuming you don't have Amazon or online shopping wherever you live, what you can do, or so I'm told, is use a couple of candles instead. So, we're going to test out this aftermarket sensor bar and test out some candles and see what works and what doesn't. Now, the name sensor bar is totally misleading because the sensor bar is literally just some LEDs inside of a box. That's it. The black part on the front of the Wiimote, that's what actually does the sensing. There's a camera behind that piece of tinted glass and it just looks for a pair of light sources. For the first test with the aftermarket sensor, we're going to be testing it here in this dimly lit room to see, you know, if it works at all and if the Wiimote has any problems tracking it. Now, apologies in advance for this Wiimote audio. It's horrible. That's something that is like never been great as long as I've been emulating Dolphin. But as for the sensor bar, it seems to be putting out enough light, at least from these few feet away, that the Wiimote can track it. So far I have missed two or three targets. Not bad. And at that point it's definitely me, not the Wiimote, that's letting you guys down. So, I give this a pass. Now we're gonna turn on all the lights, open up the window. It's a little cloudy, but hopefully the studio light will make up for some infrared interference. I have not changed a single setting on that camera. It is the same brightness and exposure settings. This is so that you can appreciate just how much of a brightness difference there is here in the room. The tracking still feels pretty good. It might be slightly less immediate, but it still seems to pick it up pretty consistently. The Wiimote audio is horrible, but at least when you're tracking with a Wii sensor bar, an aftermarket USB such as this will do just fine. But how about them candles? To get a bunch more natural light here to potentially make the candles not work, I've come to my parents' house for two reasons. First of all, the two cats. Blue light filter and dark mode. Everybody loves dark mode. First of all, while we're here, we're gonna take a look at the actual sensor bar and how it works on the Wii. And I'm immediately noticing how much better the emulated Wii looks. Now already, you can see that, hopefully you can see that the cursor is very jittery. There's a lot of light coming in from behind there, and also this TV gets really hot. Once it gets warmed up, it's going to be giving off some infrared as well. But if I jitter the control over here to Wii settings, yeah, that cursor is all over the place. And I wouldn't say it's like unusable, but it's definitely, <laughs> I'm having to time when I press. So, you can see right here, this is a video feed, effectively, of what the Wiimote is seeing on that sensor bar. And you can see that we're getting a lot of that up-down jitteriness because we are seeing some extra dots above each other. We should only be seeing one on the left and one on the right. I have a theory about what's causing this. Even if I back up, you can still see it. The problem is not the sensitivity. The problem is that the Wii sensor bar is on a very reflective, glossy surface. Something I didn't think I was gonna have to make a video about. Holy cow. There's some serious input latency. It's largely the TV to be sure and probably the Wii, because it's not as fast as, you know, 
third gen Ryzen overclocked, or even stock. Again, a friendly reminder not to pirate your games, but check out my video on how to save copies of the games that you did purchase. Instead of torrenting, just hit up eBay. It's plenty cheap these days. I'm doing a lot better now than I was back in the office because I can stand and I have much more room to move the controller and I can actually put both hands on it. I would say this is pretty much equivalent to the sensor bar at home and I am realizing just how glad I am that my Wii at home died so that I have no choice but to emulate it at home. And now, it's finally time to test candles while there's still plenty of daylight out to potentially interfere with that. Because part of testing with candles isn't just if you're playing at night when there's no other light, but also, you know, some people like to play video games when there's still daylight outside. It's weird, but some people. All right, so what I've got here are two cheap little candles, not trying to go expensive or fancy, my dad, who's actually out of town camping right now, has some emergency candles that would definitely shine too bright, and I'm not really comfortable putting those right in front of the TV while they're out of town, just in case, you know, anything happens. There are two cats here. So, you can't just have the candles close together. The lights on the sensor bar are a fixed distance apart, which is what enables the Wiimote to see how close to the sensor bar it is based on how far it perceives that distance to be. All right, so with these candles roughly the same distance apart as on the Wii sensor bar, dark mode here, not a fan of additional light sources. That could be a problem. Hey, dark mode. Dark mode, look at that distraction over there. All right, so instead of using the sensor bar and the candles, we do of course need to unplug the sensor bar. So here you go, sensor bar is unplugged. Let's see if the Wiimote works. Wow, I was not expecting that. It tracks just as well as the normal Wii. It definitely thinks it's zoomed in because the candles are slightly closer together. So there's a little bit of a reflection on that right one it's seeing. Now I'm going to point this straight down so that you can see it's not coming from that sensor bar. That is crazy. Let's see what kind of a distance we can get on that. So it doesn't carry as far as the real sensor bar, but if you crank that sensitivity, right, we can see that we're starting to get some weird, uh, that that you're seeing on the right is gonna be coming from the router, I bet ya. Nope, that is coming from outside. So I'm just pointing this straight out the window. It's nothing but backyard out there. But if you have the sensitivity down, it's not picking up anything outside and it seems to track pretty good. The only thing left to do is see if we can we play on it. I honestly did not think it would be that easy when I saw this online. And just to make things even more difficult, I'm gonna open up this wall length window over here. Dark mode, clearly not happy with that decision. It, it's still unresponsive as it was before. I definitely have to think ahead and kind of go back because I overshoot. I wanna say the tracking 
isn't as snappy as it was with the LEDs, but I can't really definitively say what. And I'm pretty sure this is the highest I've scored yet. Granted, I've only spent like 15 minutes total playing this today. So it's not like I had a lot of warm up. <laughs> yeah, even though I'm scoring better, it's, it doesn't feel as snappy as the original sensor bar for the Wii does here, but it works. I think the main reason it's not feeling as snappy is because the flames are closer together. That's just a limitation of that little plate that I'm using. If I had like a cookie sheet, non-reflective of course, because of the issues with the sensor bar from before. Yeah, I'd say on the original Wii, if you still have one in good working condition with a working optical drive, which is amazing, then you can use candles in a pinch. For people who haven't played on an emulated PC where it's much snappier and responsive, I would definitely say this is just as good for your casual Wii gamer who plays every once in a while. They probably wouldn't notice a difference. My parents would definitely not notice a difference. What are some ridiculous tech urban legends that you've heard? Leave a comment down below. If you found this interesting, then why not consider giving it a like? You can follow me on Library to see these videos in higher quality than on YouTube, but of course you can subscribe on YouTube as well. And if you won't subscribe for me, do it for Dark Mode. Dark Mode needs your subscriptions. Dark Mode is clearly happy that the candles are out. No, these are not food. You can try, but you're gonna burn your tongue.